Amal Junaid defined it, it's for the heart to be empty of what the hand is empty of. In other words, if you don't have something, the heart isn't attached to it anyway, and you're murtah, <coughs> you're content. If you're rich, alhamdulillah, you give sadaqah and your shakir. If you're poor, alhamdulillah, you have sabr and there'll be a reward for that. And the uh, ahwal, the states of the believer, are always good. It's all to do with the disposition of the soul. And it's the most elementary sermon topic nowadays, that despite the amazing achievements and fast-moving prosperity of modern Western societies, everybody's having panic attacks and anxiety and depression and on Valium, and this is the phenomenon of Prozac nation. It's the most elementary religious lesson that all of that stuff, all of that competing for more devices and more status and more wealth and all of that doesn't actually yield us what presumably is what all human beings want, which is happiness. No, it's a more elusive thing and it's more likely to be found in the prophetic wisdom which is detachment but to be really concerned with the conditions of others and this is why he, is, he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I am sent only to perfect the noble qualities of character you can only really do that if you're in society if you're with others because you can only really know yourself and others can only really see what you are. And you can only have the opportunity to transcend your own weaknesses if you're currently with other people. If you're on your own, um, you can live with your vices for a long time. But adina mu'amala, the religion is a way of engagement. Religion is about engaging with others. It is intersubjective, it is interactive, it is, it is human, it is social. So. None of this is controversial or rocket science. We know what Islam says. It is a social and a family-oriented religion which is about service and is about sadaqah. But the key here, if you're going to be in the world but not of the world, we all know in practice that that's not so easy. You get the letter from your boss saying that you've been promoted or you see that you've just um, come by a large sum of money. And for the ego, for your sense of your own magnificence, not to be puffed up in that moment, that's quite difficult. That's really difficult. To be at your graduation day, you're getting your BA for instance, and as well as being grateful to Allah for the opportunity to please your parents and to serve society, you feel really great about yourself. Well, a certain modicum of self-esteem is necessary for our continuation. That's not a problem. We shouldn't see ourselves as being miserable worms. But it's all too easy for the heart to be hardened. And that's really what the ulama are referring to when they say tasawwafa. In other words, outwardly, do it, whatever is halal, be in the midst of society, that's the way of Islam. But inwardly have that detachment and that eye which is always looking for people who might be in need of service. And if you travel with, with traditional ulama, you'll see a lot of this. And I learned a lot when I was able to travel with, with my teachers that wherever they would go, they would kind of not just space out or play with their phones, but they would be looking for human situations where they could intervene in a helpful way. Somebody who might have some misunderstanding that was causing them suffering, and just uh, without reproaching them, just a little droplet of purity into their internal lives at that moment that solves that particular problem. And it's a very beautiful thing. If you see the students of a great, say, commentator on hadith, who knows this art, tasawwafa, and I've been with people who administer their wisdom exclusively through the teaching of hadith. This is quite common in, uh, in our tradition. And the teacher is constantly scanning those who are present and really knows them well. And unlike the modern university setting where if you have issues, you go and see a, a tutor or a counsellor, but it's got nothing to do with a lecturer who are just there for, to stuff your head with information and to get you through exams. Now, in the Islamic vision, Everything is integrated into a single person who is actually there not just to turn you into a more successful wage earner, but to turn you into a better human being. You can imagine universities really having that as the central intention. Hard to imagine nowadays, but this is how it used to be. And that individual scanning all the faces out there, not just for who is not paying attention or who is playing with his phone or who isn't there, but rather who actually needs some help looking at the body language, who seems to be distracted, who has attention span problems, who is looking sick, who is not there, and then finding out, and therefore being a spiritual father to the student. That's a very beautiful thing. 
And such people tend to be loved. They're like second parents. And to have somebody like that is the greatest gift. Somebody who doesn't just give you uh, good revision tips, but somebody who actually solves your problems and cares for you and about you. That's the essence of education. And that's how things used to be. And that is not علم الحديث and علم التفسير and علم الأقائد, but it's علم التصوف. That's how we call it traditionally. The reaching into the soul of the shagird, of the pupil in the madrasa, by the compassionate teacher, that's what we mean by tasawwafa. What we don't mean is what a lot of Orientalists, a lot of Muslims who are following certain Orientalist translations into Arabic in the 19th and 20th century have kind of followed in the 20th oh, To believe in Sufism, to believe in Sufism, that doesn't really mean very much. Sufism is not a doctrinal system. Sufism is not a set of practices. Sufism is exclusively defined as the compassionate engagement with another human being in his subjectivity as a way of bringing oneself out of the self and out of egotism. That's all it is. But what it doesn't mean is Sadruddin al-Qunawi and the theory of Wahdat al-Wujul, the unity of being. He was into tasawwuf of a certain kind, but that's a particular Gnostic tendency and a particular point of view that has to be subject to the scrutiny of the ulama like anything else in the ummah, and on which there is a long conversation, and that's part of the diversity and the richness of the tradition. But Imam al-Junaid, rahmatullahi alayhi, says, defines it quite simply. At-tasawwafu khuluq. Faman zada alayka fi tasawwafi zada alayka fi khuluqi aida. Tasawwaf is good character. So whoever improves your character has improved your Sufism. That's what an indigenous definition is. Not an orientalist definition, not a modern polemical definition, or not the Iranian definition which really problematizes and sometimes persecutes tasawwuf, but uh, the indigenous definition is simply transcending yourself and applying that inner dimension of the sunnah. So Islam is to be a total package, not just for what you do with your body, which is the fiqh, or what you do with your mind, which is the aqidah, but something deeper still, your, your consciousness, your internal subjectivity, your ruh, your nafs, all of that needs to be purified. Anybody who doesn't think that they need sorting out in their internal lives uh, really doesn't have too much self-reflection. That is a necessary discipline.